Hey, how's it going? It's your host Mark with High Tech Tutorials and we are back with another episode, episode two, where we will be parsing JSON. What do I mean by parsing JSON? Well, if we just recap where we were last episode, last episode we essentially created our UI, which has our image, some title and some timestamp label. Um, and once we created that, we can see here, this was pretty much all of the code that we wrote last episode with some minor changes in our storyboard that where we represented one cell, which is one particular um, video, so to speak, that has a title and a timestamp that we have here. And in our view controller, we uh, set up some test data so every time that we create one of these cells we set the item label um, to testing one two three four five and we set the uh, the timestamp to 29 hours now just as a reminder there was a slight error in the last last video if you did not notice um, we needed to use this number of rows and section method instead of number of sections so if you did not correct that, be, please be sure to correct that here. And so as we left off, we had five videos. We essentially set up our uh, links here or our, our list to display five separate uh, cells that we manually generated. And in those five cells, we can see here one, two, three, four, five. And that was that. So what we want to be able to do this episode is actually use the YouTube API to download the actual data. So if we were to go to um, Swift News here, we can see that there's, you know, various episodes. Each episode has its title, its uh, image, and some description associated with it. And we could furthermore see that if we were to come back to Xcode, and I bring up our finished project, we can see in our finished project, we have some image, a title, and some timestamp. And each one has its own separate title, so on and so forth. So this information is not information that we wrote somewhere in our code in the app. This is dynamically downloading the data from the YouTube API and displaying it in our app. So as it changes on the back end um, or on the servers or on YouTube servers, we get that data here in our app. So that's what we're going to want to work on today is get us. We might not have enough time to actually update our UI, but we're going to create the skeleton and the model necessary to be able to reflect this information. So first things first, what I want to be able to do is start off with, um, let's go to, let's bring up our YouTube API just so we can kind of take a look at that. So if we come to our Google search here and we just search the YouTube API, we can come here and we can actually see if we come over to the reference section. In the reference section, if we come down to where we have uh, playlist items, we can see here, um, well, before I do that, let me just do a quick little reading. YouTube API lets you incorporate functions normally executed on the YouTube website or app into your own website or application. The list below identify the different types of resources that you can retrieve using the API. Um, so just to kind of wrap it all up for you, what this API is going to do, this application programming interface is going to provide some sort of uh, translation or an interface that we can use to work with the, the the YouTube data. So if we come here to playlist items and we do a list, this particular um, part of the API is what we're going to be using to actually uh, download the data necessary. So if we come down to uh, what I really like about this uh, particular API and the way that Google set it up is there's this nice little playground like area that you can actually put in some information and see what type of data it's going to return. 
So if I were to just populate the APIs Explorer here and hit this button down here and come and execute, what I'm going to do is uh, expand this into another window. Now I really, they used to have this as a full screen thing. Now it's like stuck into this little area. I really preferred it to be like full screen like it was before. Some recent update must have changed it, but nonetheless, we'll work with it this way. When we make this request, the only thing we really need, we actually don't even need the content details because we should be enough with snippet. So by just providing a snippet, max results and a playlist ID, we can execute that. And that's going to return to us our data in JSON format. Um, now in this JSON format, we can see that one of the keys we're getting back is a key called items and items contains an array of an item denoted by that brace all the way up to this brace here, which is kind of, uh, it's really hard to see in this little window, but sorry about that guys. But nonetheless, we can see with our specific items, here's all the information we're getting back. We're getting back a, some sort of an ID. Um, another object called a snippet that has some titles and some descriptions and thumbnails and just a whole bunch of information about um, our, our videos per se. So if we want to, knowing that we're working with the specific Swift News playlist, what we're going to want to do is if we come up to um, YouTube and we search for Swift News and we come up to the playlist, we can see here in the URL that after n list equals is the actual playlist ID. And this goes for any YouTube video. Um, they're all formatted this way. If we come, we first have to like the video ID, ampersand and list and the list that it's part of. So if we copy this and go back to our playlist, we can actually insert the Swift News playlist ID, execute that. And it's going to give us the information that we want specifically regarding Swift News so that we can come here. We could see the first video it gives us is one of the titles Swift News episode 52, which is, of course, the first episode that we have in the list 52, which is 5.1 memory management frameworks. And if we were to come back, we can see here it's 5.1 memory management framework, so on and so forth. There's a description. And then there's some thumbnails and some more information below. So if we go back to our simulator, we can see here that one of the things we, we know we want for sure is we need some sort of URL to this thumbnail that we have here. We know we need that. We also need some sort. We need the title, which we can see here. That title is what we need here. And we need some sort of timestamp. Now, we'll no we notice that nowhere in the API do we have this four days ago, two days ago, 10 days ago, right? The only thing the API gives us is some sort of date time and what we'd call an ISO 8601 format. So we're going to have to do some conversion to convert this date time format to something human readable like 10 days ago, two days ago, an hour ago, so on and so forth. But that'll be for a later video. But I just want to point out that these are, that's probably what we're going to be most um, focused on today is at least parsing the data that at least gives us an image, a title, and some uh, timestamp. So with that being said, I want to bring to us, bring to our attention, this flow chart that I've created to represent what our um, data model is going to look like. So if we see if I can get this all on one screen here, move this out of the way. If we expand on this and I'll just make this really big so you can see it. What we see here is when we download our data from YouTube, what we're going to get is um, and what we're interested in is a collection of items. So that's what we're going to first start off with. YouTube's going to give us in our one of the first endpoints that we can see one of the first keys other than these keys up here um, is a key called items. And that items is an array an, or a collection of multiple items. So if we were to compare that with our little chart here, think of items as videos, right? 
this box first we have a box that contains videos or items as we're as they're represented here so if we were to open up this box this box is going to have a set of videos represented by one playlist item so think of this playlist item as one individual video so within this box is several of these things right right now i'm just showing one example so that we have one flow but think of this box as having several of these and several of these has a link you know it contains all of this other child information after it so that's how i want you to think about this so we have one box of items or videos that contains a video every video has an id and a snippet and we could see that by if we come down here we can see that any given item right and this is the start of one video this little curly brace all the way down to this little curly brace is one video then comma another curly brace this is the second video down to this is this comma here or this brace here comma and this is a third video so on and so forth so if we come back up to the top we have one video we could see that we have an id and we have a snippet and when we go into the snippet the snippet itself is its own little box now this is not something i created this is the way that the folks over at google or youtube have created this api for us to consume this information so we have a snippet and that snippet has some more information that snippet has a title has a description and then it has thumbnails which then the thumbnails has its own little box as well so this can kind of get confusing but we're going to try our best to break it down in a way that allows us to consume it really easy so that's what we can see here our items has a playlist item that item has an id and a snippet that snippet has another set of items within it so that's any given snippet has a title a description some thumbnails a published at or a date and a resource id and then if we want to go one level deeper our thumbnails has its own box that has different type type of thumbnails so if we were to go into thumbnails here we can see that there's default thumbnails there are medium thumbnails there are high thumbnails and there are standard thumbnails these are all just different resolution types that youtube allows you to download for your particular image for the sake of our example we're using the standard resolution thumbnails so if i were to look into the standard that yet has another key called url which then actually gives me the url necessary to display our um thumbnail and if i were to place this in my browser i can see this url gives me this jpeg that's what we get with this so going back to what we're working with here if we come back to our preview we can see our thumbnails has and within its box a standard thumbnail and that standard thumbnail has a url and that's going to be like the gist of it so if we start talking about our title our title is within our snippet box and if we go into the snippet box we have a title so any of these little lines go these are like boxes within boxes within boxes just think about it like just containers in a sense so this is how we're going to model our data in our app as well so that we can download and consume this information all right so moving on to our next portion what i'm going to want to do now is let's actually um get our in order to work with the youtube api we're going to need what's called an api key and what that api key is going to do for us is that's what's going to allow us to authenticate that because in order to essentially make a request from this api you have to be an authenticated user um and so that uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use our API key as our token to be able to exchange back and forth with the server to say, hey, server, I'm a valid user that exists um, that has a Google account um, and I want to be able to make requests to this particular API 
and you in exchange with that request you're going to give me some information so the way that's going to work is if you come over to console.developers.google.com this url here that's going to bring you up to a page similar to this one where you'll be able to go up to the top and select a new project and what we're going to do is we're going to call our swift our project swift news app right no organization we'll just create one once we get that created um, and it's still creating on the right hand side and we get that project created we'll notice and we can click on that let me go back now that we've created that we can switch over to that swift news app and once we are here selected in our swift news app we can see hey you don't have any api's available to use just yet to get started click enable api's or go to the api library so if i come up here and enable api's and services i'll be able to search for youtube api as we can see here v3 once i select that i'll have the option to enable it and what this is going to do is enable this API on my account to be consumed or to make requests back and forth on and get some data back from it. So the next step in this process is I need to create credentials or an API key to be able to like start using this as denoted here. To use this API, you may need credentials. Click create credentials to get started. Create credentials. And then I can say which API am I using? I'm using the YouTube data API where will you be calling it from i in this particular case i'm going to be calling it from an ios app uh what type of data will i be accessing i'll say right now public data and then if i click on the what credentials do i need it'll go ahead and get my credentials and give me my api key so there's a note here uh stating that you know recommending restricting this key before using it in production restrictions limit which websites ip addresses or apps can call this api um i do highly recommend doing this before you go to production but for the, for our cases of just testing something out it's it's fine now and these keys are easily regenerated if for whatever reason it gets out and somebody's using it um you could always delete the key and regenerate a new one so it's no big deal which is why I'm not hiding mines from you guys either because it really doesn't matter. Um, so hit done. Once I hit done, I have my key here. Now that we have our key, we essentially have everything we need to be able to start making requests to the API. So as I've shown in previous videos, I like to do a lot of my mocking in playgrounds. So uh, let's launch a playground and get started with mocking out what our data is going to look like. Now, I apologize in advance. This video might go just a little bit longer than I want it to, but um, I just want to get this information out and um, have you guys be able to you know, work with this. So let's come to our terminal. And what I'm going to do is type in playground minus T for the directory. And I'm going to throw this in my playgrounds directory. And this command here is going to launch a playground for me and put that playground in my playgrounds directory. Like such. All right. So to get started, first things first, let's just create a function called like download videos or something like that. Um, that we're going to be able to essentially wrap our whole request in. And so first things first, is let's create our URL and we're gonna say from a string now what's our URL string well if we come back to YouTube here and we close out of here we can see that right at the top it essentially gives us what our HTTP request is going to be so if we first copy this piece this is going to be the the base part of our URL um, and now I'm and I'm also going to state this there's going to be there's actually a more um, a safer way to create these URLs called using um, using URL components. But for the sake of getting this video done really quick, we're just going to put everything in one string. And later on down the line, when we come back and refactor our app and do things like that, we'll we'll go back and and set things up with the way that they need to be. But for now, we're just going to keep moving forward. 
So first things first, one thing we need to note with this API is there are required parameters. And in this particular case, there's only one. And that one parameter is part. And you have to provide a part, which is essentially going to either be, uh, you can have like snippet, content details, status. In our particular case, we're just going to get snippet because the snippet property contains numerous fields, including the title, description, and resource IDs, which are definitely fields that we want. So we're going to use snippet and the way we're going to do this for a query parameter is um, once we enter a question mark, we're essentially saying anything that comes after this question mark is going to be a query param, which are going to be the parameters specified here. So I'm going to say part equals snippet. That's going to be one of the ones that we want. So the next very next uh, param that we're going to want is we're going to want to set up probably let's see what do we want next here we do want a playlist id that's going to be something that we also need to provide so if we come here and say ampersand and we're going to want to provide each parameter is separated by one of these ampersands we can say our playlist id if i look at that correct looks like that equals and where do we get our playlist id from we can just come up here and grab that from YouTube that way. And we're just going to paste that in there. And let us also say, what else do we need from our at the moment? Once we have our the only other thing that we need to provide is we also need to provide our API key. And in our API key, that's actually specified by key the keyword key. So if we hit key equals, this is where we're going to go to our credentials and we're going to copy our API key and we're going to paste that in there. So with that being said, we have essentially everything we need at the moment to download some data from our API, uh, from our, from, from the YouTube API. So if we come back here, we'll see that there is um, we have everything we have our URL constructed. Let's go ahead and create a request from this. So if we create a request, we'll say URL request, which takes a URL, we'll pass our URL. Then from here, we can create a task, which is a URL session dot share dot data task, where we passed our URL in question. And in response, once uh, the request has completed, it's going to provide us data, uh, response, and errors if there are any. And so what we're first going to do is if our error is not equal to nil, meaning we have an error, let's just go ahead and print that error down to, at the console for now. We can handle this in a better way later. If we don't have any errors, um, then what we're going to do is proceed forward and we are going to first unwrap our data because the data coming back is optional because this request could have failed. So we'll say, go ahead and unwrap my data so that this data is no longer optional. So at this point, if we don't have any data, we're going to return immediately and we're not going to do anything below here. So before I forget, let me also just to get rid of these warnings, I'm just going to provide a blank string for that. And what we're going to do is for our data at this point, what we're going to want to do now is print our data just to make sure everything is like showing up the way it needs to. So if we just say print as a string our data and encode it as UTF-8, I can also come down and make sure we call task.resume and then we could call download videos and down at the bottom here we should get the JSON necessary for or or we get it as a string um, for our particular data and we can see that here which is awesome now it's kinda hard to read here and um, if you planned on working with it in the console what we could do instead is um, create uh, use the old JSON serialization API 
to print it as JSON. And if we wanted to do that real quick, we can just say let JSON equals JSON serialization um, dot JSON object with data. And here we'll provide it our data. And as our reading options, we'll just say mutable containers. And in order to do this, we need to wrap all of this in a do try our do catch block. And this is because this particular uh, method throws, it can throw an error. So we need to be able to catch that error if it does. So here I'm just going to print the error again and going to cut this piece of code here, throw it up here and put a try in front of this, which is going to allow us to try to make this method call. And if it cannot make it, then go ahead and catch that error and print it here. Now, what we're going to want to do is go ahead and print this JSON. And if we do that, now we'll have a little bit prettier representation of the JSON in question for us to be able to work with. As we can see here, here we can see our, our root node here with E tag, and then we have items. Um, and our items are all down here. So this is part one of what we're working with. Now, the second part of what we need to do is we no longer we don't do this anymore. This is like old school stuff as, as using JSON serialization. The new kid on the block is using the codable protocol to essentially um, make our as long as we create our models and make them codable or decodable in this case then we can let the system essentially extract and parse our JSON for us so that we don't have to, because back in the day, what you would normally have had to do is um, cast this as some sort of dictionary um, of string to any, and then grab the particular keys and do things like that um, in a very kind of um, unsafe way, because you have to use string. It's a string based API and just it, it was tough. So what we have now is we want to go ahead and create our uh, structure the way that we had it represented here in our flowchart. So the first things first is I'm going to create a struct called server response. And this is going to essentially res uh, represent my topmost node. Like this is like the response we get back. And we're going to say that's decodable. So the decodable is just one piece of the codable protocol. Um, codable is uh, essentially a type alias for uh, encodable and decodable. In this particular case, we're just going to want we just need the decodable piece. So with that being said, we have our given response is going to have uh, some sort of items, right? It's going to start off with some items, which is an array of playlist items. So what we're going to want to do is say we have um, a list of items that is an array of playlist item. Now, playlist item doesn't uh, doesn't exist yet. We need to create another structure or another box for that, like this little box here. Right. So I'm going to come into a create another struct called playlist item. I'm going to make that decodable. And once we have that, that should clear up these errors here. Now, what does our playlist item have? Our playlist item has an ID and a snippet. All right, cool. So in this case, for consistency, let's make this a let. And what we're going to do is say, let ID be a string, right? And in our particular case, if we wasn't sure, we can go down here and see that ID is going to be represented as a string. And if we come back, we also see that we need a snippet. Now, a snippet is its own little box. So we need to create a box for snippet as well. So we'll say let snippet be of type snippet. Now, this doesn't exist. This is a new box which we need to create. So we're going to come down here and say struct snippet that is decodable because we want to we want to say all of the things, all of the items in this snippet box are also decodable. And so what's in the snippet box, we ask? Well, here are the items in the snippet box, a title, a description, thumbnails, which is its own box, published at, 
and resource ID, which is also its own box. So let's go back and let's fill out this piece. So we have a title. That's a string. We have a description. That is a string. We have thumbnails, right? But thumbnails is its own box of thumbnails, which we'll create later. Thumbnails, we'll just set it here. We have published at, which in our particular case is going to also be a string. And we have resource ID, which is its own box as well. Uh, all right, so now let's create another structure. First, we need to create a structure for our thumbnails that and we're going to say thumbnails are decodable. And what does what do thumbnails have standard? OK, and standard is its own box that has URL. All right, cool. So let's say we have a box called standard, which is a box, let's say, or another type box or type, however you want to think about it, call standard. And we need to create one more standard box. And make that decodable. And within the standard box is just one property called URL. And we'll say that's of type URL. Now this is a native type, so we don't need to go create a new box for this because this already exists in Swift. And we have one more box we need to create for resource ID or one more type or one more object. However you want to think about it. Uh, let's say resource ID that is decodable and a resource ID has a video ID and that video ID is just a string. If we look down here, we have resource ID, video ID, just a string. OK, cool. So now that we know that. Now, with that being said, we've essentially created everything we need to let decodable parse our JSON for us. Now, I've specifically ensured that my strings or my properties or my keys that I'm using are spelled exactly like they are in the JSON here that we get back. So snippet matches snippet. Right. The, the spellings are exact because this is how decodable is going to know how to take this data coming in and parse it to all these different little properties that we have here. So. All right. So we did. We did that. Now, how the heck do we use this thing? OK, well, let's go down to the bottom and check. So what we're going to do here is instead of creating this JSON down here this way. What we're going to do is we're going to come over and we're going to first create a JSON decoder. So let's just say decoder equals JSON decoder. This is going to be the object necessary that's going to do all of our decoding and our parsing for us. So I know that we're going to um, get a response back. And what is that response going to look like? Well, I'm going to say try to use decoder and decode my response as a server response from the data, right? What is this server response? It's our top level key that we created up here. Because remember, we're starting off at the top, at this tippity top. This whole thing is what I'm creating. I'm calling my response. The whole, the whole shebang is my response. And within my response are items. And within items are, are IDs and snippets and within snippets are descriptions and so on and so forth, right? That's this whole thing. Items, then it has an item that has an ID that has snippets and snippets have thumbnails and thumbnails have so on and so forth, right? So that's what we're working with here. We've just created the different objects or boxes or structures to represent our data. So now that I've done that, I can come down here and I can actually start checking out this data. So let's say we want to print the response. And actually, before we 
we're going to need, since we know we have multiple items, we're going to need to loop over all of the items we get back because this, the items are an array, right? Items has multiple playlist items. So we can come down and say response dot items and we'll use a for each loop. So we're going to say here for each item in, and in this particular block here is where we're going to have in this closure is going to contain some information about each item, right? It's going to loop over each items and it's going to give me that the, the current one it's looping over right here as an item. So I can then say print the item dot, right? Let's say if we wanted to get the title, how do we know where the title exists? Well, if we can either go to our, our flow chart here, we can say an items title is an item dot snippet dot title right and the item go to the snippet box from the snippet box grab the title item dot snippet dot title now if we were to run this we can see it down here at the bottom we get now uh, the first five results uh, for the first five titles and the reason we only get five is because we did not specify here in the URL the maximum number of results. If we come back here to the playlist items, we can see that there is a maximum results property. The max results parameter specifies the maximum number of items that should be returned in the result set. Except the values are zero to 50 inclusive. The default value is five, meaning if you don't provide one, it's only going to give you five. So we're just going to say um, in this particular case, let's just grab all 50. So anywhere after, for example, before we specify our key, we'll just say max results equal 50. And then we'll throw another ampersand here. So we still have our key. So we have part snippet and playlist ID and max results and our key. That's the way that works. So now if I hit play, I get 50 results down here. Cool. So now we can see we're essentially at a point where we can parse and download all of our, our, our data. And um, if we, let's say for example, we want to be able to check, oh, the, the time frame that we talked about, that publish date. So how the heck do we get the published date? Well, if we go back to our chart, we can see the path that we need to get here is uh, item dot snippet dot published at. That's what gives us our date. So let's um, comment this out for now by holding command and slash that comments out that whole line there. And if we come down here, we can say we want to print the item in the snippet box and go to the published at box or object or property. However you want to look at that. I'm using multiple words just so you can kind of have a picture in your head of how this works. And if we do that, we can see all of our different times for one, three, 27, three, 11, three. Cool. So we have that. Now, the only other item where we want to be able to get is if we go back to our simulator, we want to be able to have our uh, image our image for each video available, which is just a thumbnail. Where does that thumbnail exist? Well, this is the long one, right? If we go a playlist dot snippet dot thumbnails and that thumbnail, we're using the standard thumbnail. And then from that standard is the URL necessary to view it or to download it, however we're going to work with it. So let's take a look at that. Let's command slash to comment that out. I'm going to say, let's print the item dot snippet dot thumbnails dot standard dot URL. And that is a mouthful. But if we run that and run our project now, we can see we get all 50 URLs for each image. Pretty cool, huh? So I know this has been a pretty long video, but like, this un unfortunately, this JSON stuff is really hard to break up and there's a lot of information here. Um, now, one of the things I wanted to do is uh, I personally don't want to have to work 
with this sort of API in my app, right? What I really want to be able to do is I just want to say, give me the item dot URL. I just want the URL because at the end of the day, I don't care about thumbnails dot standard. It's always going to be the same. I just want the item URL or just like the title. If I want the item, I don't want to have to go item dot snippet dot title. I just want to say, give me the items title, right? So in order to do that, we're going to have to create custom keys and our own custom decoder to parse that information that way. And so um, being this video is getting uh, a little long, I think I'm going to cut it here. And in part two of this JSON downloading, we're going to um, refactor, just do a small refactor to um, allow us to access our properties um, in a much easier way, although this will work for the time being. And so um, this is what we're working with now. And if we want to, uh, what I'm going to do is I'll save this particular um, file so that I can uh, share it. Now I'll add a link to the description um, below so that you can actually view it and you can see how these are broken up. And you can see how we used our first structure as our response. We have items, which are playlist items. Those playlist items have ID and snippet. That snippet has a title, description, thumbnails, published at, and resource ID. Thumbnails has its own um, object that represents a thumbnail, a standard type that has a URL. Now we could certainly add more properties to this. If we were to go back to YouTube, we can see here that in our API, and if I come over here, we can see that uh, if we wanted standard, standard has like the width, the height, those are all keys we could have taken, we didn't, right? In the description here, we could have grabbed channel ID, we could have grabbed the E tag, but we don't necessarily need that specific information for our particular app. For these, the cases of our app, everything we need to represent our data in our um, in here, as well as the data here for like the link for this video ID, as well as this description, all of that is already um, provided uh, in this particular model object that we've created here. So we essentially have everything we need to really build out our UI. So in part two of this particular episode, we're going to um, part two of the JSON downloading piece. We're going to do a small refactor um, where we we're not working with this because this is, uh, I don't, I don't personally like to deal with this. Um, and we're going to bring it into our app where we can start to update our UI. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, please like share and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all of the videos necessary. And, um, I'll see you at the next one. Bye.